The Nikon F3 35mm SLR film camera is a legendary and iconic camera for many reasons. Released in 1980, the Nikon F3 was a fully manual camera with some semi-automatic functions. The battery powers light meter as well as the shutter, but you can always shoot manual using the mechanical shutter release in the front, which has a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. It's also one of the first cameras to have an aperture priority mode. The Nikon F3 series cameras had the most model variations of any Nikon F3 camera to this date. Um, for instance, the one I have here is the Nikon F3 HP, as you can see over here, um, which means high point. It basically has a better viewfinder that makes it easier for people with glasses to see through the viewfinder. The F3 was also the first of numerous Nikon F series cameras to be styled by the Italian designer. I'm gonna butcher this name, Giorgetto Giorgiaro, uh, aka a famous car designer, um, and to include a red stripe on the hand grip, as you can see here. This is a feature that would later become a signature feature for many Nikon cameras. To many, this was and still is the pinnacle of 35mm film SLR cameras. This particular F3 HP was actually my father's before he gave it to me, hence this is one of my treasures. Uh, this was my first of many film cameras and I learned everything I, I know about 35 format from this camera. I buy and sell a lot of gear, yet I probably will never sell this one, despite the fact that I don't shoot 35 film as often anymore. With that said, let's learn how to use it. If the shutter button and the light meter doesn't work, um, this obviously works because you know, I just replaced the battery, and if the only way to re uh, release the shutter is the manual release in the front, chances are the battery needs replacement. Opening the battery chamber works like most other 35 SLRs. You rotate the battery cap counterclockwise with the coin. There you go. As you can see here, notice the tripod attachment as well as the electrical contact in case you have an attachment such as the motor drive. You could actually open this with a coin as well. Uh, in this case, it's actually already opened, so you can see the circuitry. You can use uh, several different kinds of batteries for the Nikon F3. You can use either one CR1 or two SR44s or two LR44. Personally, I have two LR44s in here because they are easy to come by and are used for a lot of, of my other cameras in hand. Uh, the plus side facing is uh, needs to be facing the camera and the minus side facing the cap. Make sure the battery contact surfaces are clean. Uh, I was freaking out the other day when the camera didn't work after the battery replacement and it turns out the dust particle in there was interrupting the power input. So it's always a good idea to wipe the surfaces down to make sure they're clean. Unlike many 35 SLRs, the Nikon F3 does have an on switch. Uh, simply turn it on by moving this lever over here to the side until the red indicator is visible. Like that. Turning it off also works as a shutter lock so you don't accidentally press it. While pressing the lens release button, uh, twist the lens clockwise, which is the opposite of the recent Pentax K1000 tutorial. To put the lens back, align the dots, as you can see over here, and twist the lens uh, counterclockwise. There you go. Sometimes uh, the l there isn't a clear indication of this, um, such as my Zeiss 50 on my Nikon, but it's not hard to feel uh, where the lens is supposed to go in. You could kind of uh, wing it. Uh, one of the beauties of using a Nikon is having the access to an arsenal of Nikon lenses that's been in production for countless th decades. The F3 is compatible with any Nikon lens that has been in uh, that has been released since 1959. It's also compatible with every autofocus lens other than the G and the F AFP lenses. 
For a general tutorial on loading and unloading film canisters and 35 SLRs, please refer to my how to load and unload film video. That being said, most 35 film SLR cameras essentially work the same when it comes to loading the film cartridge. The Nikon F3 does have a lock over here to prevent the back from accidentally opening. Um, as a comparison, the Pentax K1000, as you can see over here, does not. It just um, opens quite automatically, just like that. While holding the lock to the right, as you can see here, pull out the rewind knob. If you pull it out enough, the back should pop out like this. If your camera has a memo holder like this one, you can tear out part of the film box the film came in and put it into the slot to remind yourself what uh, film you loaded on the camera. That way you get to see what film it has, uh, as well as the ISO and the exposure count. Insert the 35 film canister, then push down the rewind knob to hold it in place. There you go. Insert the end of the film into the slot of the spool on the right. Advance the film while holding the film so that it is tug. Hold the uh, canister rather. There you go. Make sure the holes on the film is aligned with the gear teeth, as you can see over here. Alternatively, uh, you can rotate the canister with the rewind knob to make sure the film is snug in there. I'm going to close this. From here, continue to advance the film using the winder and the shutter button until it reaches one. Uh, keep in mind that the dial on the left should be moving along with the winder if not the film is improperly loaded. And there we have it. It's at count one, exposure. Always, always, always make sure you are on the right ISO setting. Uh, once you're finished with the film, usually after 2436 exposures, you won't be able to advance further with the winder because you're at the end of the film roll in your cartridge. In order to unload the film, uh, first press the rewind release button uh, located at the bottom of your camera. Then you can flip up your rewind, rewind, uh, rewind winder on the left and wind the film back towards the arrow direction into the canister until the entire film successfully goes back inside the canister. You can actually feel the film getting pulled back in and the beginning of the film being detached from the spool. Once that's finished, you can once again open the back of the camera to retrieve the film canister for developing. There you go. To change the ISO after loading the film, simply lift this dial on the left and adjust until it's set to the ISO of your film. There you go. To change the shutter speed while pressing the button in the middle, uh, rotate the dial until it's set to the shutter speed of your desire. The white numbers indicate a fraction of a second while the orange numbers uh, actually are full seconds. A means aperture priority, uh, meaning the shutter speed will be automatically calculated depending on your aperture. B means bulb. X is for flash sync, which is 1 60th of a second. And the T mode is basically a bulb mode, but is activated by the mechanical shutter release instead of the standard shutter button, which is powered by the battery. The F3 has a mechanical shutter release in the front, which is activated by flicking this dial. 
To change the exposure compensation, uh, simply press and hold this button on the bottom while twisting this dial to set. If you want to learn more about exposure compensation, feel free to Google. There's a lot of resources out there. But basically, plus uh, means the photograph will be lighter by a full stop, and minus means the photograph will be darker by the full stop. You should probably um, use this option when the camera is set to aperture priority, as if you are shooting on manual, it'll mess up your light meter reading. The Nikon F3 also has a built-in 10 second timer in case you're shooting a self-portrait. Simply flick this button that kind of mirrors the on and off switch, just like that. Once you press the shutter, you see this red light uh, blinking in the front. There you go. In order to double expose an image, simply move this dial to the side. Like that. Originally it was this, but you want to move it to the side. And when you advance the film winder, it won't um, move to the next exposure, hence the double exposure. In order to mirror lock, move this dial uh, while pressing the depth of field button, which is this button. There you go. To revert back, simply move the dial again. Again, that is the depth of field button, and this is the lever you want for the mirror lock. Press while holding, uh, you want to move the lever. To activate the light meter in your viewfinder, press the shutter button halfway. The number on the top middle indicates the aperture your lens is currently set on. When you're using aperture priority mode, the one on the top left will indicate the shutter speed that's been compensated to your aperture setting. When shooting on manual mode, your goal is to adjust the shutter speed and aperture ring to make sure it's, it's properly exposed. If there's a minus sign, it means it's underexposed. If there's a plus sign, it's overexposed. Your goal is to adjust the settings so that both of the uh, plus and minus signs will show up at the same time, indicating it is properly exposed. Now, you're going to hear me say this often when I describe a film camera, but the Nikon F3 is modular, meaning you can take off certain parts and replace them with others, just like Lego. This makes the camera really flexible in terms of customization. You can remove the viewfinder by lifting up uh, the viewfinder while holding back two of these levers on the side. Just like that. The focus screen can also be replaced with a different one if you prefer to do so. On top of that, a lot of people don't notice, but you can actually use this camera as a waist level camera by removing the viewfinder. Notice this red button on the side. Uh, it actually illuminates the light meter reading that you can see over here. So technically, you can shoot like this if you prefer this method. So those are some of the bells and whistles you need to know to operate the Nikon F3. Uh, feel free to leave any comments if you have any feedback or questions. And keep on shooting and I'll see you in the next episode.